A man convicted of fatally shooting a San Diego police officer in 1978 could be released from prison in the near future after a judge granted his petition challenging Governor Newsom's reversal of the parole. Jesus Cecina was convicted of killing officer Archie Bugs after he stopped a car uh, for speeding in the Skyline neighborhood. Cecina, who was 17 at the time of the shooting, was initially sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But the sentence was reduced to a seven years to life term in 1982 due to him being under age at the time of the shooting. Here to discuss how the district attorney's office could intervene in the case and what happens next is criminal defense attorney Jan Ronis. Jan, good to talk with you tonight. Pleasure, thank you. All right, so actually I was speaking with a district attorney yesterday and she does plan on sending a letter to the governor specifically about this case. Um, what other actions can she take and what will that letter potentially do? Well, she's got to at least go through the motions. She's going to write a letter to, to the governor and see if they send, uh, uh, you know, this parole granting, and then they can go back to the courts. I mean, these kinds of cases go up and down the courts for many years, and it's certainly no exception in this case. Or before the district attorney's office is fired, he remains in jail. So this was a highly publicized trial. The rest of the, the death of a police officer in San Diego. So these cases. All right, it looks like we're having a little bit of audio problems. Are we going to try and work that out, folks, or are we good to go? Just keep going. Um, Jan, can you talk to us one more time? Are you able to hear us okay? I, I can hear you fine, and I, they heard me earlier, okay, so there I hope we go. there's no problem. All right, okay. that sounds a little bit better now. Yes, something kind of interesting. So the, the Superior Court Judge, um, uh, David Gill, that decided right. to overturn the uh, ruling by the governor, what's the basis for his judgment? Well, the, the governor has pretty broad discretion to grant these things, but it can't be arbitrary and capricious, and it can't be just based upon the high publicity of the crime. And Judge Gill is a rather conservative judge, a tough sentencer, and a very smart man. And so when, when he did overrule the governor's decision, I said to myself, my goodness, this case is probably one ripe for parole because Judge Gill is not a soft, soft touch in these kinds of cases. So, but again, it remains in the criminal justice system. Uh, the, the governor can take another shot at it, and the courts will take another shot at it as well. And this may consume many, many years before uh, this uh, inmate sees uh, liberty, if he sees it at all. You know, Judge David Gill is the one that released the bolder than most rapist, Alvin Quarles, right. and then that decision got overturned by the appellate court. So right. I see his rulings as a lot less conservative than you do. You, of course, have more expertise in this. Um, why? This is a heinous crime. We're talking about a known gang member, a 17 and 18 year old. He, of course, is seen as 17 at the time, uh, shot the police officer six times. And, uh, you know, when he just tried to pull him over, it would seem, you know, there's a, a lot of discussion that if you're a cop killer, you should never be released from prison. Well, there is that school of thought that says anybody that shoots and kills somebody ought not to be released. But there's a whole new philosophy about the um, lifetime sentences or lengthy sentences for people, youthful offenders. And so the current thinking is that people's brains aren't fully developed under age 26 and that they ought to be given a second chance. And that's some of the philosophy that may have guided the parole board in recommending uh, parole in this case. But, you know, it, this is one of those cases of, of which it has, a, the, the, the community has a very visceral response to letting a, the killer of a police officer out. But the same rules ought, ought to apply to the killer, the alleged killer, the killer of a police officer that apply to other uh, people. And so uh, rightfully the parole board probably took a, a look at it from that perspective decide to grant parole, thinking that if he, this was a non-police officer victim, that he ought to be given the same chance uh, after a sufficient period of incarceration and rehabilitation to, to maybe re-enter society again. This is no alleged killer. This is a convicted killer. And there was nope. is a yeah. case that we're talking about an officer. So, I mean, I understand the splitting hairs game, but I is a convicted killer. This is a police officer. And I mean, we're rolling the dice to see if he's not going to be a threat anymore. You said that you don't think that uh, this will be decided anytime soon, but because there's going to still be this back and forth in court. So are you saying that Cecina can't get released, let's say, in the next couple weeks? I view that's not going to happen. Longer shelf life than people are suggesting right now. 
All right, Jan, always appreciate your insight here. Thanks for joining us tonight.